At all times, band members ensure they can hear and see each other. Separation is a catastrophe. While grazing, with eyes set well above ground level, their near 360 degree peripheral vision enables them to see between their long slender legs in nearly all directions. They're very hard to sneak up on in open country. To maintain band unity, the members must communicate with each other. How do they do this? What is the language of Brumbies? They certainly vocalise, producing a range of sounds, and listen to them through their well-developed auditory system. Horse ears are forever twitching, listening in all directions. The familiar open mouth whinny or neigh, lasting up to three seconds, is the loudest sound emitted by a horse. Horses certainly whinny if they are accidentally or forcibly separated from each other. There is nothing a horse finds more stressful than separation. The sound of hoofbeats in the distance on a moonlit night may evoke a whinny in the listener. Another familiar vocalisation is the nicker, the soft guttural sound of a mother calling her foal. A stallion may quietly nicker when rejoining his band. A mare will utter a high-pitched closed mouth squeal when approached by a stallion interested in mating. For stallions, this is most of the time. For mares, it is once a year for only five to seven days when she is in estrus. For the other 360 days of the year, she shows the stallion her disinterest by her hostile body language. Colts and stallions squeal during their ritual dominance displays, sometimes in play, sometimes in a serious fight. Initially, shoulder to shoulder, they emit short snorts and grunts, but when one sniffing muzzle touches the flank of the other, there is an explosive squeal or scream that precipitates striking, stomping, turning to kick or rearing into a boxing match. The scream is louder and lasts longer than the squeal, and intends serious aggression. The warning blow or trumpet with a closed mouth can be uttered by any adult member of the band. However, it is often the dominant stallion that perceives danger and trumpets the alarm. The danger may be smelt or seen. The blow begins with a sharp inhalation followed by a loud exhalation, a two component sound as the sonogram shows. Blow triggers an instantaneous alarm response. All band members leap to attention, staring in the same direction as the trumpeter, ready to flee if that's what the leader initiates. Even young foals flinch at the sound of a blow. A sudden blow trumpet amongst a band of drinking horses will trigger a rush or stampede, with the band simultaneously getting out of the water where perhaps they feel vulnerable to attack. Each horse seems to have a signature blow, perhaps identified by other horses in the vicinity. Most of the time, horse bands are silent, with only the occasional whinny or squeal alerting you to their presence. It is often the drumming of hoofbeats over the land that tells you horses are nearby. 
These five main sounds make up the audible vocabulary of horses. The whinny, the nicker, the squeal scream, the snort grunt and the trumpet blow. However, the language of horses is not restricted to sound. It includes an array of postures, facial and head expressions and body movements, usually termed body language. Early in their lives, foals may be confronted with older, perhaps cranky, members of the band. To defuse a possible attack, fearful youngsters signal their lowly, non-threatening status by drawing their lips back, opening their jaws wide and performing exaggerated chewing motions, jaw snapping. A colt confronted by a stallion will show submission by jaw snapping. This precocious colt is not at all intimidated by his sire and boldly bites him on the legs and neck. No lip smacking for him. When a mare urinates, the band stallion will see or hear this and walk over to investigate the wet patch. After sniffing the urine, the stallion raises his head and extends his neck. With eyes rolled back and ears pinned, he averts his upper lip and draws air in through his teeth. This posture, known as flamen, opens the vomero nasal organ in his palate and draws pheromones from the urine over sensory receptors. This tells the stallion whether or not the mare is in estrus. Just in case there are other interested stallions nearby, the band stallion himself leaves a signature on the wet patch, thereby declaring ownership of the mare. When grazing head down, a horse's ears are constantly moving, picking up the sounds of the other band members. They're chewing grazing sounds. They're low frequency gut rumbles and flatus, coughs and sneezes, tail swishes, foals sucking, grooming sounds, along with the sounds of the environment, bird calls, normal and alarmed, sudden wing flutters of alarmed birds. These auditory signals feed into both ears independently. The sounds are instantaneously analysed and inform the band if there is a safety issue for their foals and themselves. The way of the horse is to flee danger, not to check it and analyse it. Stallions may stop to turn around and investigate while band mares and foals flee. Not brave for too long, they will soon rejoin the band. Both ears pricked forward, eyes focused ahead, nostrils flared, analysing the wind for scent, is the picture of an alert horse funneling sound into an auditory system fine-tuned by evolution to differentiate benign sounds from those that are foreign and potentially dangerous and to react accordingly. The most familiar ear movement is the angry ears laid back. This can be a momentary warning signal with no other reinforcing body signals. A mare with a newborn foal will warn another mare's foal not to approach too close. If a response is not forthcoming, a disciplinary nip may result. Or it can accompany an all-out attack, both ears heading back mouth open preparing to bite, whites of the eyes showing. The ears are also laid back during the snake neck herding display. The alpha stallion is on the move, head and neck lowered close to the ground, ears laid back creating an obvious signal to move or else. The band is herded before him, away from a rival stallion. A mare or filly that strays from a band towards a rival colt 
will be herded back with the snake neck display. Wild roaming brumbies moving through their home range in bands constantly interact with each other. Sometimes the interaction is relatively peaceful, a state of truce and mutual respect. It could develop into push and shove, like these two stallions using their shoulders and rumps to exert dominance. But suddenly, it may be all out, no holes barred warfare. Some mature band stallions carry significant injuries, dislocated joints damaged hooves, as well as bites and lacerations to the skin. The interaction between males dominates the social behaviour that can be seen and heard amongst free-roaming brumbies. Indeed, it is the violence of brumby male interaction that so surprises the average horse lover. There are so few hormone-driven stallions in the fields and paddocks of domestic horses. Most are geldings and mares. A stallion approaching another adopts a specific posture. He may walk or run toward the other with head elevated, nose vertical and the neck arched. there may be a stomp. A foreleg is raised and lowered vertically to strike the ground sharply. The noise created is loud and attracts the attention of other horses. There may be pawing, a digging motion, lifting a foot and drawing it forward and backwards several times in succession. The head is held low with the nose pointing towards the pawing foot. As tension escalates, there may be a strike. A foreleg is rapidly extended forward and high, directed at the opposing stallion's head. With the clear intent of making contact, a stallion may spin around to deliver the hind leg or double barrel kick. With forelimbs planted on the ground, both hind feet are lifted. The legs are rapidly extended, head high, towards an opponent. The target of a hind leg kick usually anticipates in time and balks to avoid being injured. Instead of stomping or striking, two stallions may rear. A rearing stallion achieves superior height and is an intimidating sight. 
They have considerable control over their distal limbs and can throw well-directed punches. The bite is the primary fighting tactic of horses. The ears are pinned, the mouth is open with lips retracted, the teeth are bared and the intention is clear. To grasp flesh and hurt the opponent. Alternatively, the bite can deliberately miss and the forward open mouth lunge becomes a potent threat. Bachelor cults will stage mock play fights and bite each other's legs, often dropping to their knees to avoid being bitten, while at the same time biting and nipping the opposition's legs. Stallions habitually defecate at piles, each horse contributing to the size of the pile. A stallion approaching a dung pile performs a fixed ritual display. First, his head goes down to sniff the faecal pile. He may pour at the pile. Then he will step directly over the pile, defecate on top of it, and then spin around to sniff his own contribution. Two or more stallions at a faecal pile is a provocation to battle. There is often an aggressive confrontation involving rearing and striking. The last to leave the faecal pile is the more dominant stallion. Research suggests that sniffing the faecal pile conveys hormonal information about the dominance rankings of the stallions in the neighbourhood. <laughs>